Hi, I'm Tracy, your AE with Sierra Pacific, and I wanted to bring you some information. I took a class from Fannie, and it's about their upcoming changes, June 25th for DU, and I just thought you'd like to know what I heard. Um, it's interesting. Um, some of it will be exciting and very helpful, and it's simple. Uh, let's see, they first talked about risk assessment. Um, they're going to put extra weight on files where the majority has self-employed income. What that means is if your borrower has self-employed and your co-borrower is W-2, that won't change. It's the same that we've been used to. If they're both self-employed, that will cause extra weight to the negative, then that will be the change. Uh, three borrowers, two are self-employed and one is W-2, that's going to have the extra weight. So if the majority has self-employed, then you are going to have extra weight weight risk assessment. Okay, another thing they spoke about is um, mortgage history. Mortgage history, if you didn't have a mortgage history, that was a negative weight to your approval. Um, it's something that DU would prefer to see. They're taking that away. So that's really good, especially for a first time home buyer who um, was getting um, penalized for renting. That's not gonna happen anymore. So I like that one. Uh, trended credit data, that's the new it thing. Uh, I like this. Uh, what it is, there will be weight based on their historic monthly data of balance payment and use. So let's say you have someone that pays their credit card off every month. That's going to be a positive weight for them now. Let's say you have somebody that makes a minimum payment. That's not going to be a positive weight. So uh, the, good, the reason I like this is a good tool to increase your credit score because we all know the time you have to wait and the things you have to do. But now if you tell them to make a larger than minimum payment every month, that's going to start increasing their score faster. So it's something we can use. Now they're only going to use this on credit cards even though it's based on um, mortgages and installment. They're only going to start using it for credit cards for the last 24 months of the credit report. And that's what they're going to wait on. Um, let's see. Um, oh, if your credit company isn't set up, doesn't use yet when it starts the trended credit data, you're not going to be penalized in the waiting of your do you run. It, it'd be great if they had it, but it won't be a negative if they don't. But I would call the credit company and ask them to add it because I think it's a cool feature. All right. And then lastly, multiple finance properties. <clears throat> They're changing. How, DU doesn't know if you have multiple finance properties. If you, there's, your reserves aren't going to be correct. Maybe your FICO isn't enough because of all the um, requirements for five plus properties. They're changing that. They're gonna, they've got questions that you fill out that will tell them you have more. Let's say you don't fill it out right or you miss it. Then the computer will go and read the, live, the REO screen, and they'll see what's in there. Let's say you didn't put it in there. Then they're going to go to the credit, and they're going to read the credit to see how many finance. So the computer will be programmed to sort that out and give you most likely the correct uh, guidelines and conditions. So now, in the past, Fannie had a lot of, no, well, not a lot, but they had restrictions with five plus properties. They're getting rid of all of that. Well, I think most likely because Freddie has least restrict, less restrictions, and so they're going to do that now too. But now the restrictions will be maximum 10 properties and a 720 credit score. So all those other ones went away, and that's, that's good because it got caught a lot of people off guard. Reserves. Reserves on multiple properties and in general. They are changing the way reserves are. We're no longer going to be able to say, from experience, you're going to need this much in reserves. Over time, I suppose, out of experience, we'll get an idea. But it's going to be based on something the computer has to tell us. It's an algorithm. I have no idea if I said that right. I'm so untechnical. But it's programmed into the computer. And one to four properties is 2%. Five to six properties is 4%. And seven plus properties is 6%. Percentage of what? It's a percentage of aggregate unpaid principal and balance, not on residence or subject property. So that being said, we feed the information in the computer. We have to read our findings carefully because that's going to tell us 
what we need in reserves. Okay, that's what I learned. It comes June 25th, and we'll see how all that goes. In the meantime, call me with scenarios, pricing. I'm sitting here waiting to hear from you. And until the next video, thank you. I know you have a choice.